Hey, what's going on guys? Time to do my out-of-box review here for the RE100 gun cannon detector. And I just want to start off this review by saying I've seen a couple other reviewers take a crack at this kit and not have the best things to say about it. It's not bad, but they also haven't really had too many positive things about it. And I'm here to set the record straight for you guys. This kit is awesome. I will admit it's not the best kit I've ever built. I don't even think it's going to end up in my top 10 kits of the year. But I just want you guys to know that I think this kit is pretty dang cool. Uh, one thing that you have to know about these kits is that um, these RE kits go together really quickly. They're quite simple. If you guys don't know, one thing that people usually say is that they're basically like 1 100 scale versions of HG kits. And that's pretty much for the most part true, except that one way that uh, I would say that these are definitely a step up from HG kits is that they're much more detailed and they usually have little to no seam lines on them, which is really nice. So basically on the exterior, they end up looking like master grades, just minus the inner frame. So uh, I really like H uh, I really like these RE kits because of their simplicity. I mean, this kit went together in just a man matter of a couple hours uh, and uh, you get a really nice looking end result. I will say though that this kit not quite as detailed as uh, past entries in the line have been, but considering that it's uh, a grunt suit, although we have had kind of, I guess the Bao is sort of a grunt suit, um, but this is definitely the gruntiest grunt suit I think we've had in the line, so it kind of makes sense that it's going to be a little bit more simple, but plenty of space on there if you guys are into doing your adding your own detailing. Uh, if you have a couple of subscribers or something, go in there, add a little bit more detail on there if you want. Personally, as you guys, uh, if you watch my channel know, uh, one thing that I have that I say quite regularly is that sometimes I'm, I'm a less is more kind of guy. Uh, some wide open spaces sometimes is nice. It gives you plenty of room to just uh, do some nice painting on there. Uh, but yeah, again, that's just personal opinion. Anyway, I had fun with this kit a lot. I think that it's a fine kit. Again, when you get these kits, you got to know that you're in for a pretty simple build. Um, again, without the inner frame, that gives you kind of less gimmicks, less a little bit less mobility. Um, but it also, in some cases, will make it more stable. In some cases, less stable. It just kind of depends on how it goes. So. All right, so let's start with the obvious here and note that I did put some stickers on the kit. We do have our sticker sheet. You can see I didn't use all of them. There's still quite a lot on there, especially some of these smaller caution markings and things. I didn't really bother with those. Just wanted to put a few on there so you guys could see how those are gonna look. As I always say, those stickers, especially on dark color plastic, don't really look too good, especially like here on the shoulder, you can see those clearly just look like stickers stuck on there. So I would recommend getting some water side decals for this kit. At the moment, we don't have any like official set of them, but you can just get like some just standard EFF uh, markings and those could probably work out fine. Here on the head, we have some nice color separation, that clear green part in there. And speaking of stickers, we do have our foil stickers as well, which comes with foil stickers to cover up the clear green part there for the visor, as well as the camera on the backpack. I didn't use those stickers, so I thought just keep it with the clear green part on there. You can see inside behind there, there's some nice detail. So before putting the head together, do a little painting on the inner parts, a little panel lining to bring out the details in behind the visor. That'll look really nice. Nice color separation here with the gray poking out at the chin, the barrels of the Vulcans on the head, and then of course the whole back section of the head there with some nice details. No sticker or anything for the camera on the back of the head, assuming that is a camera. It looks like it, but with this big backpack behind there, I don't know how much he'd really be able to see. Anyway, the little antennas on the head there are looking pretty nice. The head is just able to kind of wiggle side to side <laughs> like that. Upward moving, it's able to go up to about there and down all the way to there. So head articulation, pretty nice. In the stomach section, we have a little bit of side to side bend here, not really too much. Forward and back for any sort of stomach crunch is pretty much non-existent, but that's okay. When you have a kit with a big backpack, uh, sometimes that can be bad because it can just like lean to the back. So nothing there, but we do of course have a rotation here in the waist as well. As for the shoulders, we've got this joint which will swing out forward like so. The shoulder armor is just connected onto this guy here around at the top of the arm. The front part can also just rotate on its own there if you like. This is kind of loose and can come off of the arm kind of easily. Not going to be a big deal, it's not going to fall off on its own, but just while you're moving the kit around, uh, that does have a tendency to pop off easily. Here on the arm, we do have a couple of seam lines on this top part, the blue part there, a seam line right down the middle, and the forearms, a seam line right down the middle here. Now with these RE100 kits, as I said before, most of them usually don't really have any sort of seam lines, so the fact that this does have a couple seam lines, I will count that as points against it because uh, I think if they are going to have that kind of standard for the line, that standard should have been continued 
with this kit as well. Not the worst thing in the world, but it is points off. We're able to bring the arm up at the shoulder all the way up to just about 90 degrees. That's about it. And then at the bicep, we've got some rotation there. This little bit on the back of the elbow moves a little bit with some really nice detail though on there. As for the elbow joint, it only bends to about there, less than 90 degrees, but what you can do is actually pull that out, it'll slide out just a little bit, and that will give you more of a joint to get much more than 90 degrees, so a nice little feature there in the elbow. As for the wrist, it's just on ball joints, and while with the other 100 scale RE100 kits, I haven't really liked the hand design on, on some of them, but this one I think the hands are very fitting, they're just kind of big and bulky and clunky mechanical, but that fits the overall design of the mobile suit really well I think, so I like the hands on this kit. Back around to the backpack, as I said we have a clear green piece for here, you do have a foil sticker to cover that if you want. Each cannon section on the side is just connected via a ball joint so that can wiggle side to side a little bit, but basically you're just going to be rotating it forward and back. So plenty of space to move that. And I will say, as other people have pointed out, some of these parts for the cannon are a little bit loose. So again, moving them around will kind of loosen them up a little bit easily. The connections on some of these parts are just not quite long enough. So just be careful when you're moving it around, otherwise it's fine. I do like the nice vent detail up underneath there as well. It's pretty cool. This front skirt has a whole little gimmick thing built into that, so we'll come back to that. These side skirts are actually connected onto the side of the leg, so those will move around a bit. Those are, again, just on, not on ball joints, but on a poly cap, which will swing and rotate. So you're able to move those around as you like and kind of point them forward a little bit to be launching the missiles, which I believe is what those are there in the side skirt armor. Otherwise, you're able to bring the legs out to about there for a pretty wide stance. Obviously, forward and back not going to be a problem at all with the lack of front and back skirt armor. Rotation here at the top of the leg, also not a problem at all. And just for the sake of ease, I want to take off the top half of the kit just to show you this nicely. The knee bend here, when we bend the knee, we get some nice separation there and a really nice full bend, a separation of this front armor part there. This part is kind of like loose like that, or it can fold as so. And then on the back of the leg, these two bits here are uh, just soft rubber, so those are going to bend really easily when you bend the leg. One thing about soft rubber parts is that they often have a really ugly mold line on them and of course they're really super hard, almost impossible to sand to get rid of that. In this case though, they don't really have much of a mold line on there. It's there, but really, really not that noticeable. So I gotta say these rubber parts are one of the few times where I let them pass and say they're kind of okay. Generally, I just really don't like rubber parts at all. But as you can see, some nice gray detail there poking out through the back of the leg. Again here, all around the legs are just really nicely detailed, I think. Down here at the ankles, they'll move side to side just a little bit. I think the legs can get much wider than you can actually bend the angles, ankles to match, unfortunately, but that's just due to the design of the lower leg here. Forward and back movement, you'll be able to get forward to about there, back to about there, but then the toes also move, not down, unfortunately. I wish this front toe also was able to point down a little bit, but those actually fold up like so. That's kind of for its uh, cannon uh, artillery mode, I think is what it's called, something like that. Anyway, so under the feet, we do have some nice detail underneath there as well. Just to go over the other accessories we get with this kit, we get a connector for an action base. We have our beam rifle, which I really like this design. This is just kind of a standard beam rifle, and this seems to be a grenade launcher on the underside is what I would guess is what that's supposed to be. Nothing moves on here. We do have a nice little sticker and clear part there for the camera, which looks pretty cool. Uh, this little latch thing here on the top does move, but that's the only other moving part on it. Uh, this trigger doesn't move or anything, and this will just plug into the hand, either the left or the right hand. We can see we have a connection peg on both the left and the right. It's a really interesting design, very just like boxy here, and but it, I think it looks really nice. I like the uniqueness of this quite a bit. It definitely looks like uh, just something different and unique, and yeah, I like it. And then we have the 170 millimeter cannon, which is supposed to be meant for the Master Grade uh, P Bandai Nemo, which was like the unicorn version of the Nemo. Uh, which this is what it used as seen in the Torrington attack scene in Gundam Unicorn. So that's why this was included with this kit. It's unfortunate that this was not included with that premium Bandai kit. I understand uh, the hate on that one, but at least we're getting it now. And honestly, if you don't have that kit, this is a perfectly fine weapon to use with something uh, with a different kit. That said, you are able to use it with this kit. Now, it doesn't hold it really super well, uh, but you can get it on the handle there, and it's kind of just a little bit loose there of course with their wrist just being kind of loose to hold that up uh i haven't tried the two-handed grip let's see if it will work and there you have it folks it does in fact work with the two-handed grip i will say uh, it's a little bit awkward and because of how wide the side skirts are because they have those huge hulking side skirts on there It's kind of hard to get it to an angle that really looks quite right But it is going to work if you did want to use it with this kit Honestly, I'll probably end up just giving that cannon to a different kit I won't really bother with it uh, with this one um, You could also try out some different poses doing it with just kind of not an actual firing pose But just kind of like a standing kind of 
looking badass kind of pose. You could have some fun with it. You could definitely find a use with it. It's not completely useless with this. If you don't have that Master Grade Nemo kit, you can definitely find a use for that weapon. So I'm rather glad that Bandai decided to include that. They could have just just given us just only the beam rifle with this kit, and that's it. But the fact that they just threw in another weapon in there is uh, cool. Plus points. Why not? All right, now let's talk about this tall boy here that this guy's got for a dong piece. It actually extends to help him in his artillery form. So actually what we're going to do is this just folds out like so. This just kind of attaches out of there, and this will slide down here, and that slides down there. Fold this all back, and then this reconnects back there, and then you go. Turns into a third leg. And I gotta say, once he is kneeled down, it does seem to work out pretty well. That folding foot in the back and that nice double jointed knee uh, and the fact that we don't have any other front skirt to get in the way of bringing that le the front leg up nice and far forward, um, you're able to get him into a kneeling stance pretty well. And honestly, you don't really particularly need to extend the third leg down there, as it were. But basically, it it's just kind of helps the image of it, I guess. That's just like canonically what it's supposed to have there, but yeah, it's really not necessary for pulling off this stance, I would say. I have to imagine this is a pose that probably most people are not going to really bother with. They're just gonna keep it up on his feet. But if you are one of the people who like this kit for its sort of like very militaristic tank sort of look, I can imagine you might want to put it down in this form, why that might be appealing to some people. So it can do it pretty well. Not the most impressive kneel down that I've ever seen, considering that's kind of like a main gimmick of this kit, but it's definitely not bad at all. I think just for the design, I really don't know how, even if this was a master grade, how they would have been able to do it even better unless with a, 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 without changing the proportions of the kit entirely. One major flaw that I will point out about this kit is the limp wrist does make it very hard to hold up that gun. So if you're planning on holding the beam rifle out straight, you better be ready to do something to at least stiffen up that wrist, if not just glue that wrist straight in place because it's just going to... Uh, limp down. So that's why I have it across the chest here holding it in kind of two hands and again with the left hand not being like a true like open weapons holding hand I have it just like holding on to the grenade launcher trigger there. I think it looks passable but um, it's just unfortunate to have a, such a really cool weapon and not for not have like the proper hands for it so I would definitely think probably when it comes down to it I'll either see about getting an open hand or something for that to properly hold on to um, that to do a two-hander grip or some other sort of remedy. Uh, but really, I will say that there are a few loose points in this kit when you're posing it uh, in different poses. Uh, there are a few points where there is going to be a little bit of looseness, not just there in the wrist. So that could be an issue, but considering that's something that you can easily fix, especially if you're going to be painting the kit, I think that'll probably remedy most of that. Um, and again, with it being a model kit and not a toy, you have to kind of assume that it's meant to be just uh, put into a pose and just kind of kept there, not as something that you're actually going to be playing with and like trying to put it in a, a lot of different poses over time because uh, if it's loose as it is just right off the bat, it's only going to get more loose the more that you kind of mess around with it and play with it and move it around and everything like that. So uh, that is, I guess, something just to keep in mind. Although I wouldn't let that deter you from buying this kit. If you think that this kit looks cool, I think you'll be perfectly pleased with it uh, when you get it. It's a really fun kit. Like I said, it was really fun to build um, just because it's a very unique design and it went together really quickly. Um, so you can... Hey! Thanks for watching guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam store, use that coupon code ZAKUARILIUS10, save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Bye bye!